Joining us now on the show, the official Fox Sports 910 legal expert, Byron Brown, Big B from the Brown Law Group. You can find him at getbigb.com, the anti-lawyer lawyer. And Byron, listen, uh, never a dull moment when sports and legal uh, circumstances intersect. For the first time in a while, it's it's happening right in our backyard. The Arizona General Cardinals general manager, Steve Keim, was arrested for DUI on the 4th of July holiday. We got the initial arrest report yesterday. And let's just start with that. There, there is an update today, but let me just start with the fact that Steve Kime getting arrested for DUI. Typically, in, in your uh, experience, in, in your knowledge base, when you're arrested for a DUI, uh, how compelling is the case, even if there's no breathalyzer, that, that, that was taken on site? Very compelling. I mean, state of Arizona is known as one of the more aggressive states in going after drunk drivers. Um, and, you know, if the police believe that there is enough there to charge him, it's very likely that he's guilty of that crime. Um, and it's just a matter of time, in my opinion. So it's not like the police officers need that breathalyzer above point oh eight to make the arrest. There's there's enough other reason for an officer, especially in this case, Steve Kahn admitted to drinking two beers, so he admitted drinking alcohol prior to driving. That alone was enough in, in some ways to get the ball rolling, right? 100%. I mean, with the observations the officer made from blocks away with the F-150, um, you know, not being operated in a safe manner, and then upon pulling him over and he makes that admission to him, I mean, right there, they have enough probable cause to draw blood and do the, or I should say in reverse order, do the field sobriety tests. And then if those can be conducted or not all of them can be conducted, the next step would be to, to draw the blood. I'm glad you mentioned the field sobriety test. Again, a point of clarification. And we talked a little bit about this on the show yesterday, but I want to get your expert opinion on it. It's well within your right, whether you you're intoxicated or not, it's well within your legal right to decide to not do the field sobriety test, correct? 100%. Yeah, you have the right not to incriminate yourself. The only um, caveat or exception to that is the blood draw. So if you talk to any DUI lawyer, what they're going to tell you to do is don't do the field sobriety tests. Um, You know, don't incriminate yourself. Ask to talk to your lawyer. Um, Then, at least in the state of Arizona, what they're always going to do is then take you down, they arrest you, they book you, and then they're going to draw your blood. You can always say it's against your wishes for them to do that, but they're still allowed to do it, assuming that they have probable cause that um, you know you've been operating a vehicle under the influence. And it's some people would sort of view that as like a delaying tactic to hope that your BAC comes down and however long it takes from the the point of arrest to get to the station. But that's not necessarily the case, is it? No, it isn't. And I mean, there's re- there's research out there that'll tell you that, you know, a lot of times, just think about it, if you had five shots in 30 minutes, you're, and then you drew your blood right there after you completed the fifth shot, your blood alcohol isn't going to have caught up with what you've consumed yet. So um, that theory isn't always correct, meaning, you know, his blood alcohol could actually get higher with the waiting but it just comes back down to your basic right, you know, your constitutional right not to incriminate yourself. I get it how people view it like that, like, hey, you're delaying it. Hey, it's a sign of guilt. I mean, it's your constitutional right at the end of the day. If I took five shots in 30 minutes, I'd be dead within that first hour. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Byron Brown joining us here on The Drive, Fox Sports 910 Phoenix, the official Fox Sports 910 legal expert discussing the Steve Kime case. The update today, Byron, is the Chandler Police Department released a statement indicating that there an initial report there was a mistake. Um, the initial report, arrest report stated that Steve Kime identified himself as the Cardinals Director of Security, which is obviously not his title. And it was, uh, we assumed at that time when we found that that information that either meant he was so intoxicated he forgot his own job title as GM of the Cardinals, or he was deliberately misrepresenting himself to try to, I don't know, lessen the, the severity of it? If, if, if I, I don't know. Uh, I can't get into Steve Kimes what is likely inebriated mind, but it turns out, according to the Chandler Police Department, that that was a mistake after they reviewed the body cam footage. This is according to the Chandler Police Department. Mr. Kimes stated that a person by the name of Sean McKenzie was their director of security and that he worked for the Arizona Cardinals. 
not that he identified himself as the director of security. Is this of significance in the viability of this case? Uh, viability meaning the, the state's case against Kime? Correct. So, I mean, it's an, it's an innocent misrecollection. Um, you know, the words were spoken, but the context was misremembered by the investigating officer. I think if that misrecollection or misstatement of fact related to something of substance, of importance, like, you know, um, that Kaim never admitted to drinking any alcohol, totally different story, then you have something that's actually important and substantive to the case, meaning was there still probable cause to draw blood if he never admitted it from the facts known, it seems like they still would have had it, but I don't think that's going to weaken the state's case at all. So it's not as if this is an errant thread that if you start, if you're a lawyer and you start pulling on it, the entire case falls apart and Steve Kimes able to walk scot-free because the officer simply got some facts wrong in the arrest report. Correct. So the only way that that would come in, and this is kind of a term of art within the legal community is we say the totality of circumstances. So let's say, that the officer made a bunch of other errors that in and of themselves don't really amount to much. But when you start piling them up together, they become something large. Um, Now, assuming for argument's sake that there was half a dozen or more of these little misstatements, then it might grow into something that you could start pulling at as um, Kime's lawyer to try to unravel the case. But that one misrecollection in and of itself isn't going to do anything. It seems to be more just personally damaging to the reputation of Steve Kahn. I mean, there was a headline yesterday in the Arizona Republic on the AZ Central website, like essentially, and I'm not quoting this verbatim, but it was essentially police report. Kahn lied about job title, and that was something that was then aggregated by other sites. And so for 24 hours or so, there was a widespread belief that Steve Kime knowingly lied to police officers to, during his DUI arrest. What I'm hearing you say is that that doesn't necessarily mean it has any impact on the case unless it's part of a pattern, but it it is kind of damaging to Steve Kime. Does he have any possible legal recourse? Let's say even he gets convicted of this DUI. If if he is now apparently someone who people believe lies to cops, is is there a, a path that he can take legally after all of this is resolved? Yeah, so you were talking about a, a libel suit, a libel suit um, against the misstatement of fact, and to prove that he's going to have to prove, among many other things. I mean, it's a very hard thing to prove libel and slander. You got to prove like it damaged your reputation. Him being a public figure lessens the burden to a degree. Um, But then he'd have to prove that, let's say he got fired and he got fired and you can directly prove, and this is why it's so hard, you'd have to be able to prove that that misstatement of Mm -hmm. fact, meaning he didn't say X, was the sole reason he got fired. That's how high that standard is. So um, I don't think he has any legal recourse as it relates to that. in no way, shape, or form. Byron Brown joining us here on The Drive. Fox Sports 910 Phoenix, Big B, the Brown Law Group, the Fox Sports 910 legal expert. Last few questions on this topic, Byron. When we look at uh, uh, the body cam footage and the discrepancy w- that was found, that's essentially what the body cam is is on the officer for, right? Is to make sure that all the information in the arrest report is, is accurately represented. 100%. I mean, because let's face it. I mean, we all have innocent misrecollections as it relates to fact. And so the thing that the body cam footage does, and, you know, I think it's a great thing that all officers should wear is it takes away that subjectiveness is we can go back and we can watch it and we can see like, is he really slurring his speech? You know, his movements, how deliberate are they? Or do they look like that of an inebriated person? Um, I think it's a great tool that takes away the subjectiveness because we all can view the same circumstance, the same football game, or what have you, and have um, you know different viewpoints and different statements as it relates to fact, but not think that we're lying. So I think that body cam footage is is great tool. Last question: As it relates to the ability for an employer to terminate employment based on a, a DUI conviction, uh, are is it is it legally viable? Is it common? Is it uncommon? I mean, uh, that's the next topic of conversation, and we've been having it for a few days. Is 
should this lead to to termination? That's almost exclusively at the discretion of the employer, isn't it? It is. Yeah, you know, um, and Arizona's a right-to-work state, so, I mean, they could let Kime go for any reason or no reason. You know, we just saw with the Sarkissian case against USC um, when Sarkissian had that big outburst yep. and he was being belligerent, he was inebriated, and he lost. Um, then the way Sarkissian argued that is what a, the way a lot of people would argue it. So in Kime's case, if that happened, you know, then the argument would be that maybe he has, maybe he's an alcoholic. And alcoholism is now more and more broadly being adopted as a disability. So then the team would obviously have a duty to put him through, Mm. um, you know, rehab and what have you. But again, we see these things happen again, more frequent than I think any of us would like to see. Um, Someone with Kime's background, who, at least to my knowledge, never has, doesn't have any indiscretions in his past, I don't think that we're going to see teams go that route anymore because it's all, it's all too common. It's an uncomfortable commonality that we're seeing, um, but I don't think that we're going to see um, people in Kime's position and under the facts of Kime lose their jobs over things like this. He does have a prior DUI conviction from 1996 after he graduated college. Obviously, that was well before his employment with the Arizona Cardinals, but I, I, I'm, I'm just assuming here that's not going to have a serious ramification from a Cardinals perspective on his continued employment or not. No, it's, 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 it's too far in the past, and even when you look at lawsuits, when we're looking at relevant information that we're able to bring into a case, um, even in the most extreme circumstances, you're not usually able to go back more than 10 years um, and so something that far removed, um, again, I don't even think it enters the picture. Someone might mention it, and then they're just like, hey, man, it was 96. Right. It's too far back. Great insight. Invaluable perspective on what is the biggest local sports story right now in Phoenix. Steve Kimes, DUI. Byron Brown, Big B of the Brown Law Group. Brownlawgroup.com. Get BigB.com. And, of course, the anti-lawyer lawyer. Byron Brown, awesome stuff, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Jody.